This is March 9th, March of 2020. This is the Coffee of the Geek program. My name is Andy Wheelock. With me is an awesome guest, as, uh, as always, Mamta Narula. And uh, I'm going to dig into Mamta's background and her thoughts on educational technology. Um, we should notice we are in the middle of, uh, at this point, a world pandemic. And we'll talk a little bit about that and how it's affecting education in general, as well as uh, where Mamta is. Um, so, Mamta, let's start with first. Uh, I'm. It's morning here in America and uh, evening here where you are in India. But let's uh, first of all thank you for joining me. And I guess always, uh, probably you may not be drinking coffee at this time. But when you do drink coffee, what's what's your favorite br blend <laughs> or brand? Yeah, yeah, I love coffee, and I like to have a cappuccino sometimes with you. Right. If I visit you or you visit India. <laughs> yes, good. Um, so let's let's dig into your background first. So tell tell me about your background in education and educational technology. Tell me about your journey. Okay, so uh, good uh, evening, everyone. Because in India right now it's evening. Uh, I'm an educator, and I teach grade eleven and twelve, and my teaching subjects are business studies and accountancy. About my educational uh, background, I have done my bachelor's in commerce, and then I've also done my master's in commerce from Delhi University, uh, New Delhi. Uh, New Delhi is a capital of India. So I've done my bachelor's from there. And then I've also done my bachelor's in education and master's of philosophy in education in commerce. So basically my specialization is commerce subjects. Uh, I'm also a Google certified teacher and I'm a Microsoft innovative educator, trainer and a fellow. And I'm passionate about uh, uh, learning technology and using technology and then also sharing technology with others. And I, uh, I believe uh, learning is never ending. So still now, whenever I, I get time, I keep on doing online courses, technology courses, basically to keep myself updated. So this is all about my educational background. Okay. So that's a pretty vast experience. So you have kind of, I think, a lot of perspectives. Uh, so tell me about what you think of educational technology today. And of course, with the pandemic, uh, we're seeing a lot of new challenges that I think are exposing educational technology for the better and for worse. So a uh, big question and take your time and can you talk about that? Okay, so I believe uh, technology in education is a, a big boon, you can say, and uh, uh, we can create a lot of interesting and engaging ways by which we can teach our students and create the learning environments. And we can provide an opportunity for our uh, students to go for authentic learning rather than rote learning. So lot can be done with technology if it can, if it is used in the right manner. And uh, uh, we should remember that we are presently catering to the digital learners and they are not coming to school just to get the information because information they can easily get it by Googling it. So they are not coming only to get the information. They are coming to school to get a vast experience of how they can work collaborative, collaboratively, how they can go for critical thinking how they can go for some innovative ideas so all these exposures should be given in school and i think with technology we can create such a learning environment where we are, can instill all these uh, things which they'll be requiring in future like they'll be requiring digital literacy innovative thinking creativity sound reasoning so all such uh, qualities are very important and i think uh, we as a teacher we have a big role to play in that. And with technology, we can create a learning environment where we can uh, in, instill all these qualities in our students. So it is very important that we change our style of teaching, especially when I'm talking of India. There is still a lot of uh, chalk and board method which is being used. But uh, uh, this high time, now we have to change the way we are teaching. And uh, with the present situation, the whole world is facing because of COVID-19. Uh, you know, I want to tell you that in India also, all the schools, they are closed for uh, 
starting from uh, 19th of March till 31st. And we still don't know whether the session will resume or not. So in present situation, um, the technology plays a great role where teachers can connect with students online and they can give them uh, first uh, uh, explanation of the chapters and then they can give them assignments, quizzes. I think it is because of technology, uh, this particular problem which education system is facing. To some extent, we can take some initiative where our students are uh, not sitting idle. Some teaching is going on. So right now in our school also, we have started with remote learning. Uh, many of my teachers, they have preparing the video lectures. And to tell you, many of them, they are doing it for the first time. So first time they are putting a camera in front of them and they are recording their own lectures. And I told them that while recording, how you should, have, you should behave is as if you are teaching kids. So it's a new experience for them and they are enjoying this and they are really keen to help our students who are sitting at home. Uh, and uh, I think technology is something, I, I think they must be realizing now that yes, we have to learn technology. Uh, one of the big challenges here, which I think has uh, kind of exposed itself probably in a bigger light because of the COVID situation, uh, is, is digital equity of kids having internet access at home. Are you finding those same challenges and uh, is there any easy solution to, to address that outside of just trying to make sure that we broaden access to the internet? Uh, I believe uh, a lot can be done with the technology, but for this, I think some planning should be made in advance because nowadays uh, all teachers and staff, they are sitting at their home. So the only way we are connecting with each other is either through phone or messages. So I believe if teachers should be made aware of the way how they can teach remotely, if some training is given in advance, uh, if such a situation comes, I think it will be very easy for them to handle it and prepare things. So although uh, right now, uh, I told you like there are few teachers who have never used technology in my school, but they're still trying. But uh, I believe that technology training should be a part of the teacher learning process where she is learning new tools, new technologies. So there are a lot of things because I keep on exploring new things and I keep on trying that in my class. So there are a lot of tools and free tools, I can say, which you can use to connect with your students. You can give them assignments, you can check it. So I think there are a lot which you can do. The only thing is the teacher should be trained on that. It can't, you can't expect everyone to learn everything at one go. So there should be some step-by-step -step process where they are learning these technology tools and then they are trying them in the class. And when such a situation comes, I think they should be able to handle it properly. So let's talk about some of your projects that you're working on. What, uh, what's new in your world and what are some things that you want to do? And maybe because of the situation, maybe you've had some new ideas of projects, but talk about your projects. Okay, so I want to tell you about one very good project which is started in India. The name of this project is Swayam. Uh, this is an online platform made by government of India and the objective is to provide best teaching learning resources to all. Maybe you're sitting in a remote village where no teacher is there. So it's a free platform initiated by government of India. So I'm presently working with this project and we are uh, uploading good quality teaching material so that in case a school is not having a teacher or there is some problem, they can easily access that uh, material on web. So it's a very good portal. And I think uh, for situation like this, we are going to use it in our school also, in our uh, teaching also. And apart from that, uh, there's a board which is followed in uh, private and public schools in India that is called as CBSC. Central Board of Secondary Education. So I'm presently working for capacity building workshops for teachers. So uh, like I told you that teacher training is very important. So when I'm taking their uh, workshops or uh, seminars, in that I'm telling them that what are the new ways in which you can make your teaching more effective. 
So I'm telling them uh, the projects which you can do or the tools which you can use. So these are the training programs which are organized by these organizations. The government school teachers, private school te teachers, they attend. So I'm associated with all these organizations like CBSC, SCRT, where we are taking capacity building workshops for teachers. And apart from that, my personal favorite is blogging. So I have my subject blog through which I connect with my students 24 by 7. And then I also have a technology blog. So in technology blog, what I do is whatever new tool I uh, explore and use. So I make a tutorial of that. And I make a video of this and give certain details and link. Then I put that in my technology blog, which I'm running. And uh, on the social media, we have a Facebook group called as Technology in Teaching. We are, a lot of teachers are there across the globe. And in this platform, we are sharing the ideas of how technology can be used effectively in the class. So all good articles, videos, anybody who want to share that, we have that common platform and we are exchanging a lot of ideas. And to tell you, it's a global network. So a lot of good ideas are coming and we are incorporating that in our class. So these are a few of the projects which I'm doing. Wow, sounds like you're you're keeping busy. Can you tell me the uh, address, the URL of the blog and the Facebook page? What was the group again? Okay, so uh, the uh, blog which it is there is uh, technology in teaching. Okay. Okay, and the Facebook page is with the same name. If you search in the Facebook technology in teaching, the first group which comes on the top will surely be <laughs> blog at the uh, page I am talking of. Okay. So it's an excellent way where we are interacting with each other. A lot of new ideas I'm getting from that uh, group. Great. All right. So we've already hit on some of these, um, but I think we can all talk about some challenges uh, as we go forward. So what do you think uh, of the challenges in ed tech today? I mean, even beyond what we, we talked about with the pandemic, but uh, what are some of the challenges? But then maybe more importantly is what are the solutions? So although um, challenges are there and it differs from country to country, so I'll be basically discussing about uh, the challenges in EdTech, especially in my country. Uh, so I'll divide them into two. So there are two major challenges which we want to overcome. The first one is there is fear among teachers. Uh, they fear that uh, it's very complicated, will not be able to learn it. And one more greatest fear is that technology will replace us. So because of this fear, they are not ready to use the technology or not, they are not inclined to learn the technology. And uh, here I want to just share one quote uh, that uh, technology will not replace great teachers, but technology in hand of great teachers can be transformation. So if teacher realize that technology is not going to replace them, Rather, they can create a great learning environment for the kids. I think this fear will go and they'll start learning the technology. And uh, they should know that technology is basically not there to replace them. It is there to empower them. And it, they should not fear this technology. And nowadays, a lot of online technology platforms are there. Um, where you can learn technology sitting at your home, at your own pace. So you can learn. There is nothing that you should fear. You have to just dive in and try. And you have to see what works best for your students. So first one I told you is the fear. You have to remove this fear from the mind of the teachers that technology is difficult. The basic thing is you have to dive in and you'll see that it is very interesting and a lot of new things can be done which are very good for your students. So sensitizing teachers before taking any technology workshop or any other thing, I think you have to make your teacher sensitize that yes, technology is important and we should not fear, rather we should embrace this change and they should go in for learning of new tools, technology and other things which can be used in class. So second is the lack of knowledge of how to use the technology properly. 
so this is little separate there are certain schools in india which already have the smart boards laptop tablets but teachers are not trained as to how to use this technology in a right way so if they are they are, they are just showing the powerpoint in the class or they are just showing the video in the class and they believe okay we are using technology so technology how this has to be used in class they should be made aware of the correct way here i want to share one thing which i attended and learned from uh, microsoft head uh, educational uh, vice president anthony salicito in one of the uh, workshop uh, he said that uh, he said that technology should not be your plan rather it should be part of your plan so whenever you are designing the uh, learning environment for your students or you are planning to teach certain thing in between how you can use technology this planning should be done in advance and it has to be used at a right place so your work is not over that you are just using any tool without recognizing how it should be used in the class so it is very important that you train them that designing a lessons with technology require certain planning you should know what thing to be used at what time and in what way so i told you so these are the two main things first i told you the fear among the teachers and second is the correct usage of technology so i believe these are two two major problems which i believe in in my workshops i keep on stressing on these two things you know it's funny you know we're we're so far away you're at nighttime i'm in morning and yet i think uh the the challenges that you just outlined are pretty much the same challenges we're having here <laughs> so uh and i think you know as far as the fear goes i think you know we can learn from our students because they they just they understand that technology sometimes doesn't work right you just have to keep kind of battling you know I hate to use the word battling through it, but just keep uh, progressing through it. There's going to be challenges with technology. The internet's going to go okay. down. Um, you know, the technology may not work the way you thought it was. Maybe you don't have it. And I think if you just kind of just work through it, the kids are usually pretty, um, you know, the, the students oh, yeah. seem to have more of a, a you know, they'll work through challenges, I think, because they've grown up with it. So, um, mm -hmm interesting <laughs> comments and I love that quote okay so now it's time for the speed geek question so these are random I'll give you you know three we might go we'll try and go from there again they can usually be short answer sometimes they can be whimsical they can be kind of fun so uh, here we go so our first question is um, besides students this is a good one uh, besides students who or what inspires you who are your inspirations or what are your inspirations okay so you're asking besides students yes okay so students they come on number one they are my <laughs> biggest inspiration so the second is i believe uh, i have a lot of uh, friends and educators which i know which are working across the globe and they are my biggest inspiration after students so like <laughs> even do you know that even you are inspiration for me the way you uh, do things like i think uh, whenever i'm connecting with some educator there is something which i learn from everyone and uh, i told you uh, oh, there is something good in everyone and uh, when i'm connecting with them when i personally meeting them in workshop or when we are interacting online i think uh, they keep on inspiring me with their work. So uh, after students, educators are my biggest inspiration. Uh, that's a great answer. Yeah, I, I had to add that besides students because every teacher says their students inspire them, which is a wonderful <laughs> yeah. thing. That, that's probably the best thing. So great answer and thank you. So our second question is, uh, what's your favorite app? Do you use apps on your phone or on a Chromebook or what's your favorite app? Okay, so I think uh, I use a lot of apps on my phone and the Chrome extensions also. Uh, but I think which is your favorite depends upon what uh, work you want to do. Um, but what I have seen is the app which I'm using most often is Canva. 
so canva is an app where you can design a poster you can design a presentation you can design a logo so it is one and all so it is the app which i keep on using for making infographics and then posters presentation videos and lot of uh, content so i believe uh, that is my favorite that's a good one and one i've used limited but so now i have to work more with it Okay, so our last one, okay, this one may be a tricky one for you, or maybe a difficult one to choose just one, but what's your favorite social network? Can you repeat? I can't hear you. Oh, sure. What is your favorite social network? Okay. Twitter, Facebook. Okay, social network. Um, so... Uh, what I feel is my favorite is Facebook. Uh, if I find out the time I spend on Facebook, so I believe it is something as apart from my Twitter and other Insta ne uh, networks, I think I'm mostly there on Facebook, looking after my groups, following other groups and uh, seeing what is happening in uh, uh, classrooms of the teachers in uh, schools because they keep on posting different uh, pictures, videos, so uh, I think that is something I appreciate. And sometimes uh, when I'm sitting at night about to sleep, I open my Facebook and scroll through the work. So Facebook is something which is not only interesting, engaging, but at the same time, I'm learning a lot of things from it. So my favorite. Yeah, it, it definitely is a good one. And I, you know, it used, there used to be a time where I'd say Facebook is for my personal life and Twitter is for my professional, but really, you know, Facebook, as you mentioned, there's a lot of good education groups in Facebook now. So you really can kind of uh, use it for both personal and profession. There's a lot of good things out there. Yeah. So, well, thank you, Mamta. This was a really great interview. Thank you for taking your time. And uh, we'll look forward to collaborating in the future because I think, uh, again, as, as we've seen here, connecting from across the miles can be a really powerful experience and a great way for us to learn. Even uh, through all the uncertainty in the world, we can, uh, we can bridge the gap pretty easily through technology. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> I want to add one yes. thing if you can give. Uh, sure. I just want to share two things. You can say my life philosophy or things which I want others to follow. So one thing is uh, you should always be learning. Never think that you know everything. Uh, as an educator, I think you, uh, learning is a never ending process and you should keep on trying something new and uh, keep on learning some new things. So I told you a lot of online platforms are there. So please keep on learning, never stop. And second is whatever new things you're learning, you should not keep it with yourself. It is always better that you share your knowledge because when you share, I think it is best way to go because when you share, others also share and then you learn so many new things. So never stop sharing, never keep something private. If you get something good, please share it with everyone. So these are the two things which I follow and I want others also to follow. That's great advice. Thank you so much. That's a perfect way to, to summarize um, your presentation. Thank you.